Welcome to another math session here in Soviet with Sir Jude. Today we are going to discuss about the Pythagorean Theorem and its extension theorems. So let us have the Pythagorean Theorem is also known as the Pythagoras Theorem. It states that in a right triangle, the sum of the squares of the legs is equal to the square of the hypotenuse. So therefore, we can only use this formula in right triangles. So let us have a right triangle here with sides A, B, and C. We should take note that A and B or sides A and B are the legs of our right triangle. And C, since it is the side opposite our right angle, it is called as the hypotenuse. If we are going to apply this Pythagorean theorem in formula, that will just be leg 1 squared plus leg 2 squared is equal to the hypotenuse squared. So applying the sides A, B, and C to the formula, since we have A and B as the legs of our right triangle, so that will just be equal to or equivalent to A squared plus B squared is equal to C squared. Or we can interchange the position of left and right side of the equation as C squared is equal to A squared plus B squared. So this Pythagorean theorem or the Pythagoras theorem is known because of Pythagoras. So he is a great mathematician and a philosopher. So it is believed that there are over 371 Pythagorean theorem proofs originally collected and put into a book in 1927. So isa sa mga nangoleta at nagcompile ay si Albert Einstein nung siya ay 12 years old pa lamang. So he uses this formula in the theory of relativity. So papaano nga ba tayo nagkaroon ng Pythagorean theorem? So I hope na napanood mo yung previous video lesson about right triangle similarity because we are going to derive that formula using the geometric mean. So let us have this triangle. So we have sides A, B, and C. So C again is our hypotenuse. So let us draw our altitude from our right angle to the hypotenuse and let us name that as X. So if you can see, we have here two new segments formed. So we have Y and C. So using the geometric mean in the legs, so let us have first B. So take note that in order for us to get the measure of each leg of this triangle with an altitude to the hypotenuse, ang kailangan natin will be the geometric mean of the hypotenuse and the segment adjacent o yung pinakamalapit sa mismong leg. So we will now be having B is equal to the square root of C, which is the hypotenuse, times the segment adjacent to B, which is C. So mas malapit si Z kesa kay Y. So therefore, we will include Z. So if we are going to square both sides of the equation, we will now have B squared is equal to C times Z or C, Z. Okay? So next, let us proceed with the other leg. The other leg of the right triangle is A. So how are we going to apply the geometric mean? So same process. So that will just be equal to the square root of the hypotenuse times the segment adjacent to A. So, mas malapit si y, so therefore, we will be including y. Next, we need to square both sides of the equation. Squaring both sides will result to a squared is equal to c times y or cy. Now, let us have these two equations form. Ang gagawin natin, i-add natin yung mga equations. So, if we are going to add a squared plus b squared, we now have a squared plus b squared is equal to cy plus cz, that would just be cy plus cz. If you can see, in both terms, there is a common factor which is c. So, if factor out natin si c. So, that would just now be equal to a squared plus b squared is equivalent to y times the binomial y plus c. So, if factor out natin si c. Now, if you can see y plus c in this triangle, so y plus C is just equal to the whole segment or the whole side which is the hypotenuse. So we can replace it as C. So C times C, that will just be equal to C squared. So now we have the Pythagorean theorem, A squared plus B squared is equal to C squared. Or we can interchange the left and the right sides of the equation or it can be C squared is equal to A squared plus B squared. So jaan nagmula yung 
Pythagorean Theorem. So, isa lang ito sa mga proof about Pythagorean Theorem. So, another proof is given by this one. So, ang gagawin will be getting the areas of the square and the areas of the triangle in order for us to derive the Pythagorean Theorem, which is a squared plus b squared is equal to c squared. So, now, let us have some examples on Pythagorean Theorem. So, let us solve for the missing sides. So, if we are given with this right triangle, so we are given with the two legs which are 4 and 3, and we are to look for the hypotenuse. So, ang ginagawa ko, lagi siyang leg 1 squared plus leg 2 squared is equal to the hypotenuse squared. Hindi ko ginagamit si a squared plus b squared is equal to c squared because those variables a, b, and c can be changed. So, we should take note ang ina-add natin ay yung mga legs or yung square ng mga legs rather and equate it to the square of the hypotenuse. So now, let us substitute. So let us have leg 1. So leg 1 will be 4 and then leg 2 will be 3 and then square them. Well, actually, pwede mong pagbalik na rin yung dalawang legs. Pwede mauna si 3, pwede mauna si 4. Next is equal to the length of the hypotenuse is C and then square. Next, let us square both terms. So, 4 squared is 60, 3 squared is 9, and then c squared is c squared. That is why we have 16 plus 9 is equal to c squared. Simplifying 16 plus 9, that will just be equal to 25 is equal to c squared. Then, in order for us to get the value of c, extract the square roots of both sides of the equation. So, we now have positive negative square root of 25 is equal to c squared. We only need to consider the positive value of the square root of 25 because we are speaking about the length of the sides of a right triangle. So therefore, upon extracting the square roots, we will now have c is equal to 5 units. So therefore, the length of our hypotenuse is 5 units. Let us now proceed with example number 2. So for example number 2, we are given with this right triangle. So again, we will be using the same formula. The first leg squared plus the second leg squared is equal to the hypotenuse squared. So if you can see, nasaan nga ba dito si hypotenuse? Take note na si hypotenuse ang side opposite the right angle. So this is the right angle. Opposite it will be 13. So upon substitution, we will now obtain 5 squared, which is the first leg, plus x squared, which is the missing leg, is equal to 13 squared. So, 5 squared is 25, then 13 squared is 169. Therefore, we have 25 plus x squared is equal to 169. Let us now apply addition property by adding negative 25 to both sides of the equation, or just simply transpose positive 25 to the other side of the equation. Therefore, we have x squared is equal to 169 minus 25. 169 minus 25 is 144. So, we have x squared is equal to 144. So, in order for us to get the value of x, we just need to extract the square roots of both sides of the equation. So, therefore, we have x is equal to 12 units. Again, we only need to include the positive square root of 144 since we are speaking about the side of a right triangle. So, the negative value of the square root of 144 will be considered as extraneous solution. So therefore, we can say that the length of x or the missing leg is 12 units. So next, let us have example number 3. So we are given with this right triangle. So we are asked to find the length of the hypotenuse. So it is the side opposite the right angle or katapat ng right angle. So again, using our Pythagorean theorem, so we just need to substitute. So that will just be 10 squared plus 3 squared is equal to h squared. 10 squared is 100. Then 3 squared is 9. So that's why we have 100 plus 9 is equal to h squared. 100 plus 9 is 109, which is equal to h squared. In order for us to get the value of h, we just need to extract the square roots of both sides of the equation. That is why we have positive negative square root of 109 is equal to the square root of h squared. So therefore, the final answer will be h is equal to the positive square root of 109 units. So square root of 109 is already in its simplest form. Now, let us proceed with the fourth example. 
This time, we are to find the other leg of our right triangle. So we are given with the hypotenuse and the other leg. So using the Pythagorean theorem and substituting the value, so that will now be a squared plus quantity 4 squared of 3 squared is equal to 10 squared. So 4 squared of 3 squared is just 16 times square root of 9. So 4 times square root is 16. Square root of 3 times square root of 3 is square root of 9. Then 10 squared is 100. So that is why we have a squared plus 16 times square root of 9 is equal to 100. Now, we all know the square root of 9 is 3. So 16 times 3, that will be 48. Then, we need to apply the addition property of equality or just transpose positive 48 to the other side of the equation. That is why we now have a squared is equal to 100 minus 48. Then, let us subtract 100 minus 48, that will be 52. Then, extracting the square root of both sides of the equation, so that will just be the positive negative square root of 52. Let us now simplify square root of 52. So, 52 can be factored as 4 times 13. And 4 is a perfect square. The square root of 4 is 2. While the square root of 13 will be square root of 13 since 13 is not a perfect square. So, therefore, the simplest form of square root of 52 will just be 2 square root of 13. So, hence, we can say that the length of the other leg of this right triangle is 2 square root of 13 units. Let us now proceed with the last example. Take a look at this figure. If you can see, we have here same markings in the legs. So this leg has the same marking with this other leg. So therefore, we can say that their measures are equal. So if this side is 4, we can say that the other side is also 4. So this triangle is what do we call as an isosceles right triangle. So let us now solve for the value of the hypotenuse or the length of the hypotenuse. So using the Pythagorean theorem, let us substitute the given measures. So that will be 4 squared plus 4 squared is equal to h squared. Then, let us now simplify. So that will just be equal to 16 plus 16 is equal to h squared. 16 plus 16, that will be 32, which is equal to h squared. Then for us to get the value of h, we need to extract the square roots of both sides of the equation. Then, we only need to include the positive square root of 32, and then the other one will be the unextraneous solution. So upon simplification, this square root of 32 can be factored as the square root of 16 times 2. We all know that the square root of 16 is 4, while 2 is not a perfect square. Hence, we can say that the length of the hypotenuse is 4 square root of 2 units. So let us now have the Pythagorean Theorem extension. So after having the Pythagorean Theorem, there are still extensions of that theorem. So it answers this question. When are triangles considered as acute, obtuse, and right given the measures of the sides? So let us now have our representation. So we let C be the longest side and A and B be the other remaining sides. So we will be using this restriction as we discuss Pythagorean Theorem extension as well as the examples. So it is an acute triangle if the sum of the squares of the two shorter sides, so we have A squared plus B squared, is greater than the square of the longest side. So mas malaki daw yung sum ng squares ng shorter sides kesa doon sa longest side. So that is an acute triangle. Now, it is a right triangle if the sum of the squares of the two shorter sides is equal to the square of the longest side. And it is an obtuse triangle if the sum of the squares of the two shorter sides is less than the square of the longest side. So take note of these ideas because we will be using this one as we answer the following examples that will be presented later. So let us now proceed with example number one. So what kind of triangle is formed with the given measure of sides? So we have 5, 12, and 13. So the first thing that we should do is to identify the longest side. So 5, 12, 13, the longest side is 13. So therefore, C13 ang um, is a substitute natin for C. And 5 and 12, that will be for A and B. So, the left and the right side of the equation, hindi pa natin alam kung equal ba sila, greater than or less than. So, let us put a box with question mark. 
So let us now substitute. So that will be 5 squared plus 12 squared blank 13 squared. So upon simplification, 5 squared is 25, 12 squared is 144, and 13 squared is 169. So then, adding the 2, 25 plus 144, that will be 169. So both left and right side of the equations are equal. So therefore, we can say that the triangle form is a right triangle because the sum of the squares of the two shorter sides is equal to the square of the longest side. Okay? So let us now proceed with the other example. So this time we are given with 5, 7, and 11. So again, we identify the longest side because ito yung isa substitute natin kay C. There. So now let us substitute the given measures to A, B, and C. So we have 5 squared plus 7 squared blank 11 squared. So 5 squared is 25. 7 squared is 49, 11 squared is 121. Upon adding 25 and 49, we will produce 74 is less than 121. So, anong kind ng triangle ito? So, yung sum ng squares ng shorter side ay less than 121. So, it is an obtuse triangle. Okay? So, next, let us proceed with the last example. We are given with the sides 5, 6, and 7. First, we identify the longest side. So, the longest side is 7. Next, let us substitute it here. So, we have 5 squared plus 6 squared blank 7 squared. So, 5 squared is 25, 6 squared is 36, and 7 squared is 49. So, upon adding 25 and 36, we obtained 61 is greater than 49. So, what kind of triangle is formed if the sum of the squares of the two shorter sides is greater than the square of the longest side? That's correct. So, we have it as an acute triangle. So, the sum of the squares of the two shorter sides is greater than the square of the longest side. This will be the end of our discussion about the Pythagorean Theorem and its extension theorems. So, kung may napulat ka for today's discussion about this topic, do not forget to like this video. Share this video to others for us to help. If you are new to our channel, please subscribe to our channel and hit the notification bell for more video lessons. So, this is Sir Jude. Good day!